In this video, we're going to focus on Papa Parse JS, and Papa Parse is very useful on parsing CSV strings, files, uh, remote files, etc., etc. And the reason I'm going to focus on this right now is because this is becoming more and more important if you're working with data, for example, from Chart.js, where you have the data cert inserted from a CSV file and you want to convert that into a chart or you get it from Excel or somewhere else. So this is a very common scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore Papa Parse with that. So I noticed that we get more, more questions as well from the viewers about this topic and also how to implement them or combine them with Chart.js. So I think it's good to have a series of Papa Parse exploring how to use this. All right, so Papa Parse JS is basically a JavaScript library which is currently in version 5.0 and basically does the following it converts a csv file or csv string or remote file into a json or it can convert it from a json back to csv so it's very useful and it's also very very fast so let's start and explore how to do this because right now if you can see here you can see some of the text here and the codes here you might get confused it looks quite easy you have the demo here but sadly enough the demo doesn't show you the code what it does show you it shows you the end result which eventually if you click on parse here and you open up the developer tab you can find here the end result however most people do not like to know what's the result they want to know also the code and also understand the back of it how does it really work so this is what we're going to do in here for now so what I want you to do is first of all just get a basic HTML file like this you can see here this is my title and etc etc and basically in here we're going to work with this script tag we're going to work here with the JavaScript, but to do this, we need to get first the Papa Parse JS library. So let's get that one first. In here, I have a link. It's called CDN JS. Oh, sorry, that's not what I want to do. CDNJS.com/library/papaparse. You can see here the latest version, which is currently 5.3.1. We can grab the one here. I'll just copy this one here to grab the minimized version, but you can also get the default version here. So paste this in here, make sure that this is above your JavaScript here. Then we can start working on this part here. So how do we do a string? If we have a CSV string, so how do we grab that? Or how do we convert it eventually to, to JSON? Now let's look at this. So we go here and let's go to the documentation here. And in the documentation, you can see here parse a string. So how do we parse a string? If we click on this, what you want to do, just to be sure, a CSV to JSON. So it can be readable in charges or etc. etc. So you can see here this is basically the code. So if you see this here, you would say, oh, this is quite straightforward. We copy this, we put it in here, and we're done. Well, it's not exactly. So let's start and explore how this really works. Because if we would do this here, and this here CSV string should be a string, and here would be the config, it's too confusing. So let's break this down here. First of all, let's create a CSV string. CSV or like a constant. Is a CSV item. Yeah, so this is basically the data or CSV data that we want to convert. So in here, it could be a very basic string. Say, uh, uh, hello, comma, world, comma, yes, and comma, no. All right, very straightforward, nothing's fancy, just a string here. So this here eventually, we put it in here, we can just cancel out this. We do a console log, you will see we do get some results. But of course, if it's the desirable result, depends. Save this, refresh, open up the developer tab. You can see here we get an object. You can see we get four, uh, an array with four index or four elements. And there you are. So these are, are the four. And this is very straightforward. But what if you want to have, let's say you have this number, you have cost, sales, uh, revenue and maybe this should be not sales but should be profit and uh, anything else let's let's keep it like that for now so we have like this then we have this here we have these three arrays so you would say okay this is fine but what if I want to have cost something else here underneath you will see that this will not work of course because it's a string so if you put in here another item you would say well maybe uh, I'm going to put like this you say here one two and three 
you see you get all these kind of weird errors and it doesn't work maybe it should not be a string here let's see if this works and you can see here it just doesn't make, it doesn't work at all because it creates a certain type of error because it's a string by default so maybe here like this like that if we do it like this here we click on this and you can see here it just consists or it just combine them it just put them in there as a push stuff so this is not what we want so if you would have multiple rows here it needs to be basically in a file or a remote file there's a way let's start and explore that one first so what i want to do here is we can put in an a option here and basically we do it here in a area text so we say here area text or is that a text field so text area sorry and then here I'm just given an ID. This will be then the uh, CSV data. And in here, we're going to grab this. We're going to put it in here. What we need to do here is we just paste this in here and we have to put in here and enter. No need for sim quotations, but we have to make sure that there's no space between. The moment you put in a space here, you will see that this will be incorporated in your item. So if I now remove this part, or well, we can just change this, we need to rename this. What I will say is ID equals this, and then we'll grab that one here. So we say here, document dot get element by ID. And here I grab now the text area, syncretation text area, and I say dot value, because we want to extract this specific value out of this. If I save this, we will copy everything, including the spaces here, etc., etc. So let's save this, refresh. As you can see here now what happens, it's been here organized, but of course we have these spaces, it considers it as well. And we get here the following. We get the array, but there's one problem with the array. We have two lines here, which is fine, or even three lines. One with some space here, so there must be some space here at the very end. We have here as well some space here, which I don't want as well. So we don't, and we have here this space. And you can see here, this here is not what we call a string or this is a string value instead of a number or an integer. So, but this here is one part of it. We can still play around with that. Let's play around with it a little bit more because you can see here in Papa Parse, if we click on the configuration, there are a lot of configuration options here where you can say indicating a header, which is very useful in our case. So imagine we will have the header here. I'm going to add up a header, but I want to clean up the data as well because the data right now is, uh, a mess here. So let's clean up the data. First of all, let's remove all this space here. And most likely, if we want to have the text area, it must be that. If I save this now, maybe this needs to be as well like this. And then if I go here and refresh, all right, so it's more better now. You can see here now the array has been cleaned up. We have in total of two arrays, which is correct. This The white space has been removed. And the only thing what we still need to do is this here. And this one here, all the space, let's remove that as well. Let's clean this up as well. And put in here too, save this. All right, refresh. Now let's see if this is slightly better. All right, that looks slightly better. Not that much, but that's acceptable right now. Because remember, it's a string. So everything is considered here as a string as well. So you might have a situation where you say, oh, wait a minute. I would like to have the cost here. Oh, you can see here the, this part here, the cost should be directly matched with this so that we have a name matching cost is one, profit is two, and revenue is three. And if you would have another item here underneath, exactly the same story, but they are always connected to this here because right now they're not connected. And what I mean by that is, let's put in here uh, 10, 20, and 30, and save that, refresh, because right now it's not connected at all. We have this here, we have again this blank space here, we can probably use a we can use a code for this to clean this up but you can see if i would say cost one or cost zero should be number one and cost uh, 10 should be this the should move here up one so this needs to be matched so basically what we can do here is using the headers so let's look at this one here so we're going to look at this we have here the header set on false this is a default configuration of all options and there's a lot of items here so we're going to grab this and we're going to set this on true and you will see the difference once we do this. So in here, and you can see here, well, how do we need to put the code? You can read it up here. Well, let's go back here to the string. It says here, 
put in a comma. We have this here, but you can ignore that. Just put a comma here and curly braces. Then we can work with that. So we say here the following. Say comma. Basically here curly braces. And in here, you can say header is set on false. Well, let's see if this works. All right. Header is set on false. Nothing happens now. So pay attention. Later on, we're going to change this. We make this the header. What will happen is that it will cross match each other. So we say here now, header set on true, save. And once we refresh, open up the data, and you can see now the cost. You can see it's being broken down now. Cost one, cost so basically, or this is cost zero now, you can see here. And this one is cost one equals 10. So now it matches up nicely. This is very useful if you're going to work with charts where you want to grab only one single line. And then you get all the data points of a single line here. What I don't want is this horrible item here. This is basically a blank item. It sees only one value here because probably we have somewhere the space and the solution would be like this. However, I want to make this intelligent enough. So how can we do this? Well, let's go back to the configuration here. And in here, you can find the following here. And let's search for it. It should be here, blank text or empty something with empty empty skip empty lines all right that's probably the one i need or is it the other one let's double check so this is for unparse let's see if we have here for the parse item because i would like to have it in the parse searching for that where are we let's click here on the objects of configs we view do we have any skip empty lines or white lines I don't see it in here so let's see if this one works nicely and eventually we can still solve that afterwards so we say here we will say skip empty lines true let's see if this works not sure now uh, ah, all right it does works because apparently what it does is it will go in the because this is really done for the unparse but apparently unparse it will just read it and clean it up before it parse it in so which is quite nice. As you can see here now, we have only this, even if we would have here multiple enters. If I save this and refresh, we have no problem with the data anymore. This is quite common if you have Excel files where you have rows that some are blank rows. So if I put this back on false, you will see that this now will grab many blank arrays. As you can see here, uh, oh, here we are. You can see cost, 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 all blank, blank, and blank. In total, their arrays are seven arrays, but five of them are basically blank. And this is this will help this one. This is just really some of the basics. We're going to check in the next video. We we'll go more deeper. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in ChartJS, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.